Hey there. So uh, unlike most of the time that I post videos, um, this one is explicitly uh, quicker and it's because I got an email this morning uh, with some information that made me feel um, like uh, I wanted to make a post addressing it. So it's particularly for, for members who are um, part of the Religious Society of Friends and specifically those that are connected to Friends General Conference or uh, as it's known FGC. Um, this is um, kind of a denominationally focused uh, idea, but I don't think it's uh, <laughs> in isolation. So while uh, some of the jargon and the context is explicitly kind of liberal Quakerism, uh, I don't think that this is uh, by any means the only place where things like this happen. Well, um, so what did I get? Uh, the backstory is some months ago, I was asked, uh, along with 9,000 other people, to fill out this survey, um, which was kind of done by this the institution of Friends General Conference, which is kind of the national liberal Quaker kind of um, amalgam. Uh, and it was supposed to be kind of, you know, what are my interests? How can that organization help the monthly meeting? What's my interaction with it? They're just trying to kind of get benchmark for, for what their constituents want. And at the end of it, it said, if you'd like to hear the results of the survey, uh, click this box and we'll send it to you when it's done. Well, apparently, as of this morning, uh, it got sent to me because it was done. And uh, m most of it is unsurprising to me. Um, but something uh, kind of just jumped out at me when I read it that made me feel like I wanted to uh, kind of reflect on it and and see what others kind of in the world uh, internetedly thought about it. So two, two uh, kind of pages from this, and I will link them on my blog, theimageoffish.com, uh, if you're interested, uh, and I'll kind of uh, post up the whole survey there. But uh, two questions, the responses to which I think uh, worth discussing. Uh, question two. Uh, what do you see as the three to five key challenges for the Religious Society of Friends in becoming a more vital, healthy, growing faith community? Uh, and the sum of all the answers in the survey suggests that these are the top five. First of all, uh, outreach is the biggest challenge. Second, engaging and leading by example. Third, unifying our purpose and identity. Four, care of community and stewardship. Five, deep worship. And then there's some other ones, but those are the top five, with outreach being the number one challenge to uh, kind of obstacle to uh, needing to surmount to get a vital, healthy, growing faith community. And uh, kind of the fifth ranked one is deep worship. Um, Question number three, uh, what are the three to five characteristics you believe describe a vibrant or healthy monthly meeting? And uh, that starts with number one, deep worship, two, care of community, three, welcoming to all, four, nurturing gifts and ministry, five, religious education and outreach, which was number one. And the other one doesn't show up on this until uh, the eighth slot. Now, so first, what I wanna say that's great is um, awesome that that we think that deep worship is like a marked sign of the way that communities are vibrant and healthy. Well, that's superb. I think that that's great. Um, my concern is that there's a kind of like systematic meta level kind of cart before horse thing going on. If, if it is the case that however many thousand people got asked and hundreds of people responded, and the consensus tends to be that the mark of a, a vibrant faith community within the Religious Society of Friends is deep worship. And yet, the thing that we think we need to be doing to make a vibrant health and healthy community is to do outreach, there's a disconnect there. Um, and it concerns me, uh, as someone that identifies um, with the tradition, because I think that that, that disconnect um, 
is a function of uh, of not really kind of being tied into our own tradition. We try so very hard in our humanness to make things work. And it, this seems to just be symptomatic of a larger arc wherein we try very, very hard as people to make things happen that are actually kind of beyond our control. Um, so if it really is the case that the, the, the kind of surest mark of a healthy, vibrant faith community is deep worship, then what I want to suggest is the thing that we need to be concerned about is deep worship. I understand that it can feel daunting and anxiety producing that we don't have very many youth, that our numbers are dwindling, that here in New York Yearly Meeting, for example, where I'm uh, a member uh, since the 50s, uh, our, our uh, population in the Yearly Meeting has been on a very steady decline. I understand that. But, but if we don't trust in, in the power of this Holy Spirit, to kind of guide us through, if, if we don't make our primary focus worship and attempting to attend to the will of the Spirit, well, then we've kind of sold, uh, <laughs> thrown the baby out with the bathwater. To focus on outreach, to think that outreach is the thing that we need to do, that outreach is the biggest challenge to kind of getting a vibrant community, when at the same time we think that a vibrant community is about deep worship, um, well, it's a concern. Um, and it's a concern because I think that if we really attended to uh, deep worship, if we attended to rooting our communities in a sense of discipleship and in a sense of discipline, then in fact, outreach and care for community and leading by example and any of the other things that you could put on the list would come from that. But, but those things are fruits and their root is uh, uh, living in the, the presence and the, the power that takes away the occasion of all war. Living in kind of gospel order with, with, with the inner teacher and the Holy Spirit being the thing that, that centers our lives. Um, my hope and my earnest kind of belief is that when... Is, is that we have monthly meetings that are grounded in God and whose main understanding of their vocation is to worship and discern of the will of God and to live those out as best as possible. And my belief is that if we do that, then all the kinds of good things that we could imagine for health and vitality in our meetings uh, will happen. But we have to remember that the ordering is that way. Uh, set our sights on God and discernment and worship and trust that through that process, uh, works will emerge. Um, and not kind of responding to anxiety with human techniques to make things work. Uh, I, just, I just don't think that's the way forward. Uh, and concerned that in the hustle and bustle of uh, outreach and kind of making things work, we sometimes might miss that still small voice. And that voice is, uh, for me at least, uh, sweet uh, beyond measure. And I thought I should say that.